smoke weed every day. Hello, 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 YouTube, and welcome back to what a weird world we live in, guys. Episode three. Anyway, guys, in today's episode, we got some fucking horrible stories, but I'm gonna make sure that not all horrible stories. It's like, like I always say, I don't want you to leave and be like, now I just feel depressed. So I'll make sure I mix it up, guys. Stay tuned to the end, and I will give you a high five. And uh, yeah, let's jump. Pin to it. Okay, guys, so the first story that we're going to talk about is a really bad story, to be honest. Like, when I read it, it, like, made me sick a little bit. Also, maybe wanted to punch this motherfucker in the face, but that's not my choice. I mean, if I seen this motherfucker, I would punch him in the fucking face. But anyway, let's jump into the story anyway. So it's a story about a man being jailed for 17 years after images of him raping a toddler were found in a bag that he donated to charity. Right, well first off I'd like to say, well done for donating to charity. And second of all, uh this guy he don't even but he don't even deserve to be living, to be honest, in my opinion. Very solve it at forty nine had hang, handed a torn bag of belongings into a second-hand shop in, a Col in Columbus, Ohio. However, upon inspections of the goods inside the Salvation Army, workers found 32, fucking 32 pictures of, of a naked child and the man sexually assaulting her. She is believed to have been between like 16 and 18 months old I mean like god damn like that shit is just disgusting like wow he shouldn't get prison just saying my opinion he should not get prison the polaroids which were discovered alongside with old receipt and post are believed to date back to 1999 the police tracked down Gary using the address on the documents he left inside the bag. According to Colombo's dispatch, upon arresting upon arresting him, he told the officers that he was a very sick person. See that what does my head in like Oh I'm a very sick person. Well you're not like well yeah you are. You're you are a sick motherfucker, but like saying that is him just trying to sort of play the victim card because if you generally believe that he like was a sick person and he should be this he should be that why did it take him from like 1999 up until 2016 to even like own up to it well he didn't even own up to it to be honest he happened to just fuck up which led to him being caught for it so, if he generally thought, oh my god, I'm a sick human being, then why the fuck didn't he just hand himself into the cops? Like, the minute he even thought about that, why didn't he just, like, get help? Like, go to some fuck. I don't know. I don't have them problems. Like, I don't know who you go to, but, like, why didn't he just do that or something? You know? I don't get that. I don't understand how he could say, oh, I'm a very sick person after, like, holding this secret for, like, Nearly 17 years. Fucking hell. I mean, it just annoys me when people do that. Like, they fucking get caught for something that is just disgusting. And then they start with the, oh, I'm a sick person. Feel sorry for me. No, don't feel sorry for I don't feel sorry for him one bit. I don't think 17 years in, pres in prison is even nearly non long enough for what he did. So, yeah, I don't feel sorry for him. Not one bit. I'm sorry. If that offends anyone, but that... It, that's what I fucking think. So when he was sentenced, the uh, jury that sentenced him said this was like the bottom of the barrel for humans. Literally, like this is one of the sickest things he's ever seen. And like obviously he's sentencing people every fucking day for crazy stuff. So when he says it, it's like, God damn. You know what I mean? You Damn. He was fined £35,000 and told that 
he'd be required to register to a sex offender every 90 days for the rest of his life when he was released. Oh, a sex offender officer. Okay. So basically, uh, he got 17 years in prison. And then when he comes out, he will have to go to some place every 90 days and uh, like check in with them, I guess. And he's also got to pay £35,000, which again, I, I don't think that punishment fits what he did. I mean, if it was my world, I'd just literally hang him outside, but it's not. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't get them choices, but that's why it's a good choice. I don't get them choices, because I would literally kill this motherfucker. Like, shit like that is just... God damn. You know what I mean? Fucking hell. You gotta be some absolute twisted person to even think about doing shit like that. Fucking hell. Uh, anyway, guys, I've given this guy way too much time talking about him. Uh, I just thought I'd make you aware of the story because it literally made me feel sick when I read it. And this is sort of what this series is all about. Me telling you crazy stories that I find in the newspaper that maybe might not have made the news channels. So you're still aware of them. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we're done with this this waste of life we're gonna move on to the next story guys okay guys so the next story is a kind of interesting one because i can guarantee as a beginner you'd be like oh no but then like the more i get into the story i can sort of see why but anyway i'm gonna just like you know the story the headline is i'm doing it because i love my family a woman selling her virginia for 325 thousand pound after her house burns down a woman is auctioning off her virginia for more than 325 thousand pound to help her family following a devastating house fire Catherine stone 20 left Seattle to work in one of Nevada's infamous legal brothels after spotting an advertisement on Facebook. There, she is advertising her virginity for 400000 However, she won't accept a bid unless she feels a connection with the person. Her controversial decision has left some saying sex should be for love Sex for the first time should be for love, but she claims that is exactly what she's doing. And now that's clever now, because if you think about it, she's only really doing it to get money to help her family move out of burned home. So, on the first like look at the story, you're like, oh my god, how, how could like how could you do that? Like how could you openly try and sell your virginity? But to be honest, I can sort of see it why she would do it. Um, I mean, fuck if my house burnt down and I could sell my virginity for 400k, which I can't because I sold it for a fiver. Yeah, so if if I could sell my virginity for 400 fucking k and my house burnt down, god damn, I would sell that shit. I'll sell that shit twice. You want to buy my virginity? Okay, buy it this week. You want to buy it next week? Done. 800k. Done. 800k for fucking Jesus Christ. So yeah, I can see why she did it. Like, and to be honest, I don't see anything against like wrong with it at all. Like, some people may have a bit of a down look on it just because like she's advertising it and blah 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 blah, and you didn't think of selling your virginity for 400k. Neither did I. I sold it for 250, and uh, yeah, so. I can understand why she did. There's a little clip I'm going to show you guys now of her advertising it. So I'm going to let you watch that and then I'll talk to you when you come back. Hi, I'm Catherine Stone and I'm from Seattle, Washington and I'm here to sell my virginity. 
Um, the whole reason I'm doing this is because last year my family's house burned down and we were forced to live in the burned down house. Um, I contacted Dennis Hoff last year and he agreed to help me sell my virginity here at the Love Ranch. Are you back? Yeah, you are. I see you. Uh, so, yeah. Eh. So, um, so yeah. Uh, so, now you've seen the video. Uh, I told you the headlines. She's selling it at a brothel with some guy called Dennis Hoff. Apparently, he's like... The biggest pimp in Nevada, apparently, he owns all these brothels. So, yeah, he said he'll help us sell it as long as he gets a 50% cut. That's 200 flipping K. Just to, like, uh, do someone in one of his dreams. Shit, you can do someone in one of my rooms. I'll give... Do it for the tenner. Nah, all jokes aside, guys. Uh, yeah, so, I don't see anything wrong with that at all, like... Fuck it, you know, do what you gotta do to help your family out. I would. Uh, so, yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you. Like okay, guys, that's where the video is gonna come to an end. I know I normally cover three stories, but because of how much I went on about the first one, I don't want to make this video way too long. So, I'm just gonna cut it off here. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. This is the third episode. And uh, you, you all know me a quid. Now, nah, but all joking, guys. But not joking, actually. Give me me quid. Nah, I was. I was joking. All right, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Y'all stay fresh. Y'all the best. And peace. Smoke weed every day. Hey, 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 hey.